Before you are the final steps in the mathematical construction of the flag of Nepal. This is drawn using entirely mathematical instructions, and there are 23 steps in the process. For the first step, draw the line AB of any desired length. The original instructions are in the description box below, but in this video we're going to use a modern equivalent. For the second step, we need to draw a line AC perpendicular to AB such that the line AC equals 4 thirds of AB. To do that, let's extend AB to the left, draw a circle with some radius and mark the other intersection point. Using this distance and center being the left point, let's draw an arc. Let's likewise draw an arc using the right point and the same radius. The curves intersect at two points and drawing a straight line through these two points would give us a line perpendicular to AB. This is how we draw the perpendicular bisector between two points, as well as a line perpendicular to some original line. To measure 4 thirds of AB, let's first draw a circle with radius AB and center A and mark the intersection point. We are also going to draw four line segments of equal length on AB. Since we are measuring in thirds, we're going to connect the point on the perpendicular line to the third point from the left. To segment the vertical line into three equal pieces, we're going to first find two points on this extended line and draw their perpendicular bisector. This helps us draw another kind of a perpendicular line. But since we know how to draw perpendicular lines passing through a point on the original line, we're going to draw a perpendicular line. What we have done here is draw a line parallel to the original line passing through a given point. We can draw yet another parallel line passing through the first point from the left. This segments the vertical line into three equal pieces. But since we're going to 4 thirds, let's draw a line parallel to the original line passing through the fourth point from the left. The intersection point is the point C. Next, we need to mark the point D on AC such that AB equals to AD. To do this, we're going to draw a circle with radius AB and center A, and D is the point of intersection. For our third step, we're going to mark the point E on BD such that AB equals to BE. For step number four, we're going to draw a line parallel to AB that intersects the point E. We need to mark F and G on the line such that AC intersects F and AB equals FG. And to ensure that AB equals FG, we're going to draw a line parallel to AC passing through the point B. This point of intersection is G. At this point, we no longer need the line segment EF and we're going to erase that as follows. For step number 5, we're going to join G. For step number 6, we need to mark H on AB such that AH equals a quarter of AB. This requires us to subdivide the line AB into four equal segments, and the first point of intersection is the point H. Now we're going to draw a line parallel to AC intersecting H, and this line would intersect CG at the point I. For step number 7, we are going to bisect the line CF at the point J. To do this, we are going to construct the perpendicular bisector of CF. At the point of intersection, we obtain the point J. We are now going to draw a line parallel to AB intersecting J, and this line would intersect CG at the point K. For step number 8, intersecting HI and JK gives the point L. 
we no longer need the line JK. For step number 9, we're going to join JG. For step number 10, HI and JG would intersect at the point M. We no longer need the line JG anymore. Let's zoom in on the point M, and step 11 requires us to draw the shortest distance from M to BD. To do this, we're going to draw a line perpendicular to DE, passing through the point M. The distance from M to this point of intersection is the shortest distance. Now mark N on HI below M such that MN equals this shortest distance. The corresponding point of intersection is the point N. Now we can zoom out once again. And for step 12, we want to draw a line parallel to AB intersecting the point M. This line would intersect AC at O. Let's zoom in near M once again. And mark the points PQ on the line such that LN equals LP equals LQ. What this amounts to is to draw a circle with radius LN and the corresponding points of intersection would be P and Q. Let's clean up the canvas a little bit. And for step 14, draw a semicircle with center M and radius MQ. For step 15, draw a semicircle with center N and radius NM. Mark R and S as the intersections and T as yet another intersection. For step 16, draw a semicircle with center T and radius TS. For step 17, we need to draw an arc with center T and radius TM. For step 18, we need to draw 8 identical isosceles triangles in between these two arcs. To do that, let's first mark out these various points of intersections and draw a line parallel passing through M. Let's draw yet another line parallel to MT. These two parallel lines help us connect yet another line which actually chops up this angle into two equal pieces. This is known as the angle bisector. But since the semicircle is symmetric, we can repeat this same construction on the left. Now we need to bisect the remaining angles, and the first thing we want to do is to draw yet another parallel line. We can connect the radial line and draw a line parallel to this line. We can join up the origin with the intersection of these new lines, and this angle bisector would split up the angle into two equal pieces. Due to the symmetry of the triangle, we can repeat this construction throughout the semicircle. To get the triangles, we need to form the angle bisector yet again, form the intersection, and then create the triangle. We can repeat this construction throughout the arcs. And in fact, we need to add two more identical triangles beside these eight triangles to get the actual shape in the flag of Nepal. Let's now zoom out. And step 19 requires us to bisect the line AF at the point U. Now let's draw a line parallel to AB intersecting U, which would intersect BE at the point V. The lines HI and UV would intersect at the point W. And we need to draw a circle with center W and radius MN. We also need to draw a circle with center W and radius LN. Now let's zoom in on the two circles. 
we need to draw 12 identical isosceles triangles between these circles. Let's first mark out some of the intersection points, and we need to split each quarter circle into three equal pieces. Since each angle is 30 degrees, this can be done. Draw a circle with the given radius and mark the intersection point. This triangle, since all of the sides are equal to each other, must be equilateral. We can rotate this triangle to obtain yet another point of intersection. This successfully helps us divide the 90 degrees into three equal segments. And due to the rotational symmetry, we can repeat this construction throughout the circle. For the inner circles, we're going to construct the angle bisectors between these two points and mark out the point of intersection. We can repeat this construction throughout the rest of the circle. We can now connect the different points to obtain our different triangles and fill them in respectively. Now let's zoom out, and for our final step, the border has width Tn. We will color the border with blue and the body of the flag with crimson red. This is the geometry behind the flag of Nepal and the calculus behind circles can be explored here.